Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another indie show review. I'm your, I'm your host for these, Dan DP Depreezy. I am by myself because, you know, things happen. Uh, can't get a co-host for this one. Uh, Ray is busy. Froz is on assignment. Uh, and, you know, we there, there was, you know, to pull the curtain behind, to pull, pull the curtain back a little bit, there was maybe someone from Barry on this show, but things didn't work out. Just schedule wise, so it is what it is. However, I am still here, of course, because where else would I be? I have no life. Anyway, we are talking, of course, Barry Wrestling. Canadian wrestling, a hidden gem among the Canadian scene. And we are talking, of course, Barry Wrestling's Fallout Tournament, which was what was on April 13th, which is almost a month ago now. Yes, we are that behind. Yes, things happen. Deal with it. Anyway, let's talk about the show. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's, let's just kick into things and move on. Uh, so we kick things off with the show with Alexia Nicole, uh, the Barnet woman. Uh, she starts to show off saying that she needs a new tag partner because it was meant to be her and Gabriel Fraser against uh, Top Tier Talent. Uh, but Fraser is injured, so she and Fraser need a partner. Well, need a Fraser needs a replacement. Jesus, Fraser needs a replacement to take on a Australian takeover. But Kaz Jordan is also injured, so we don't know what's going on there. Um, so Alexa doesn't need a new partner, and at this point, the people in the crowd at the FLCC Arena, which I didn't say earlier, the FLCC Arena, Ferris Lane Community Church. Uh, the crowd start volunteering. Like they volunteer they they say they start volunteering themselves and it's like, you know what, pick me, Alexia, I'll be the partner to take on top tier talent. Um but Alexia prolongs it a bit more as well and eventually the camera pans to like, oh, who's just in the back of the venue conveniently? <laughs> it's of course Trent Seven. Uh Trent Seven who allegedly was shooting hoops. Before the show. So he was there. Selling merch. Uh, he gets roped into the match essentially. And it is settled. It will be. Uh, Alexa Nicole. And Trent Seven. Who had perhaps. Barry Wrestling's match of the year. In 2023. Uh, against ATO. But who will be. The partner replacing. Kaz Jordan. Uh, that is. Not revealed. But ATO attack. Uh, Julian Ward. And a mystery man. That I think his name was Clyde Kane, Clydesdale Kane. It's it's something like that. I think he's from Clydesdale and he's called Clyde Kane. But we'll get to that match when we get to it. Um, anyway, Junior Ward and the Mystery Man attack Alexia and Trent. But I will say it was quite a light attack. There wasn't much to it. So it might be more might be more mind games to try and get in their heads beforehand. Uh, otherwise, I'm not entirely sure what the point of that attack was for ATO to do that. Seemed a little bit wasteful, if I'm being honest, but I digress. Uh, we move on to the Fallout Tournament first round match, uh, which was the first match in this tournament, which uh, the rules were, if, oh, here we go, if you won, you were out of the tournament and the losers advanced, so you didn't want to lose because an, uh, at the very end, the final two compete and whoever loses that match gets fired. From Barry Wrestling. Uh, so this was a Fallout Tournament first round match between Myung J Lee and Pretty Ricky Wildey. Okay. And Pretty Ricky Wildey. Uh, before things could go ahead, uh, Pretty Ricky's counterparts in the Royal Family, Grizzly Mac and Anthony Musso, come out to manage uh, Ricky. Of course, Shiloh and Kyle aren't there because Shiloh. Pardon me. Shiloh. Uh, this is a drink. Uh, Shiloh is on a, a three day bender. Uh, I'm not sure what the reasoning was for it, she's just on a bender. So that is what it is. Anyway, the match itself uh, things start off with Ricky attempting a few roll ups to no avail. Ricky uses a cap gun to pop Young Jay in the face, but that, 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 that's not a DQ, I guess. Um, eventually, though, Young Jay catches up because he's Young Jay Lee. He, he's amazing. Uh, that is until, of course, a lariat takes Mun Jay down. Uh, but a top rope move from Ricky results in him receiving a kick to the midsection. 
Uh, Milk and Jay has general control with various strikes and suplexes until a superplex gives Ricky some hope. Amongst other distractions for Musso and Grizzly, Myung Jae kicks Ricky in the nuts and pins him for the free. Uh, so Myung Jae wins, so Ricky advances. Uh, I ran match three stars. It was a very good way to open the show. Start with a fan favourite in Ricky who can get the crowd hyped up more than what they already were from Jim Lowe's efforts. Because Jim Lowe is one of those guys who goes out before the show to hype the crowd up for the show that's about to come. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the first match. It was a good way to open, and yeah, I just, I just, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like you can't talk about it because you just really enjoyed it. It's like my notes aren't even that good for it because I was watching the match. It's <laughs> like I, I don't know how else to really say it. <laughs> um, we move on though uh, to the first round match that came up next, which was between Boris Krobos. And Raja and Hasha. Uh, unlike most in this tournament as well, Boris requested to be put in this tournament because he's replacing someone who uh, was replaced, uh, that being Puff. Uh, so Boris requested to be be put in this tournament to prove to the world that he deserved to be in Barry Wrestling. Uh, things to kick off though in this match with Raja taking Boris to the corner with some corner hip thrusts. There is some debate on commentary um, about Boris's IQ. But as that happens, he has a roll through net breaker on Raja. Uh, no one really has control in this match because there's a lot of back and forth. But a T bone esque suplex gives Raja a burst of control. Uh, Boris about to come back though with numerous corner attacks and a corner mounted series of stomps. Ultimately though, Raja wins with the abstraction. Uh, I rate this two three quarters. It was also a pretty strong match. Uh, it's always going to be a little bit harder following someone like Myung Jae Lee and Pretty Ricky. But I digress again. Uh, this was a good match where Neil Man was fully in control and there's plenty of back and forth which can make for fantastic viewing, which it did. Um, of course, as you would have seen on the preview for Hick on the Walls that I did with Mike Jeffries, Mike did confirm that Boris did receive an injury during that match. Uh, Rajan, it happens unfortunately, but Rajan can say that he's put Boris Krobos on the shelf. So, anywho, we move on to first round match, the third of these. Uh, a true battle of David and Goliath here as the bar burner, Van Landen, takes on Grizzly Mac. Uh, as I already, this is a very much a David and Goliath battle. Uh, Goliath, uh, Grizzly Mac, takes an early advantage uh, as Van bites a bit more than he can chew. And Grizzly just takes advantage. So in other words, uh, Van just tries lifting him. Doesn't really work out that well. But apart from a sporadic moment of hope, Grizzly has majority control of the match. Uh, a burst of adrenaline, though, hits Van Landen in the sole. And he takes it to Grizzly. And even, you know, and even Musso. He even hits Musso, if you know, with various kicks. Including a Rough Rider, which only gets a one count, unfortunately. Uh, the Royal Family, of course... It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be the Royal Family if they didn't try something. So, so some Royal Family shenanigans involving uh, the tag title belts, which, revolt, which results in Musso accidentally hitting Grizzly with the title in the head, uh, which, which then leads to Van Landen pinning Grizzly. So Van Landen's job is safe. Grizzly is moving on to the next round. Uh, after that, of course, Grizzly is... He is pissed off. He is annoyed. He is, he is really in another space now. And he essentially tells Anthony Musso that Anthony Musso is going to be replacing Grizzly in the tournament. <laughs> then we on to the final first round tournament match. Between Clay Wilson and Mark Wheeler. The match starts as any Clay Wilson match does. Where he battles the crowds chanting he sucks. He sucks. I'll say you suck. I don't suck. Yes you do. You suck. Whatever. Uh, Wheeler has control for the start of the match. And he runs on Clay with various strikes and kicks. However, Clay is a very well-researched man. When he fights someone, he scouts them ahead. He knows what he's going to do beforehand. So Clay's able to come back with a pull against the ropes on Wheeler's back. And there's actually some back and forth here. Which you wouldn't necessarily think when you think about Mark Wheeler. You know, he's done everything in Barry. Like, he shouldn't necessarily be struggling against Clay Wilson but he was there's a lot of back and forth here and some rather unprofessional commentary where Mike Jeffries keeps referencing Clay's potential firing 
and wanting it to happen. Like, very unprofessional, Mike. Very unprofessional. Anyway, Clay showed his chops and his scouting by systematically taking Wheeler apart, focusing mainly on that leg and that foot that, of course, uh, Mark Wheeler was out injured with. A top tier, a top tier DDT does connect with Wheeler, but he buys himself some time by rolling to the outside and eventually kicking out at two. Uh, a top right move goes astray for Clay as Wheeler takes him down and hits him with the revolver for the eventual win. Uh, I actually didn't rate as any stars. I don't know why. Uh, three and a quarter is what I rated this. Um, I don't know why I didn't write that down, but I didn't. Uh, so three and a quarter. I I enjoyed this. It was a a great match to finish off the uh, first round. Um, not surprised at any of the results, to be completely honest. Um, if it had been Puff and Rajan, I would have been a bit more conflicted as to who I think was going to win. But I don't know. Um, that didn't happen. It was Boris, so I'm not really surprised at the result for that. But yeah, so the semi finals are set. It'll be Boris Krobos against Pretty Ricky and Clay Wilson against Grizzly Mac or Anthony Musso. Hey you. Yeah, you. Do you like this video? There is a button. It's a very sexy button. It says subscribe on it. I wish I could click on it, but YouTube won't let me. Damn fuckers. Uh, so we move on now to the next match of the night, which is a breakaway from the uh, Fallout tournament matches. It is ATO, Australian Takeover, Julian Ward and Clyde Kane. It was Clyde Kane. I wrote the name down here in my notes. It is Clyde Kane, not Clydesdale Kane. Clyde Kane and Julian Ward from Australian Takeover taking on the new, the new like term team, uh, Bionic Mountain, which is Alexia Nicole and Trent Seven. Uh, ATO attack before the barrel, of course, uh, but it isn't too long before Bionic Mountain take control back. It also doesn't take long before both Mike and Jim trade compliments about how tough Trent Seven is. Okay. <laughs> uh, Julian Moore spends a lot of time working on Trent's lower limbs, attempting to hinder him. Uh, Kaz Jordan even, even gets involved at one point and comes rightly called out the ref for not having control of the match, which is a common thing in this match. Referee Brad Myers, was it Brad Myers? I might be just shouting shit about Brad Myers, not even realising it. Uh, whoever the ref was, I don't remember now. It was a month ago. Um, I, think, I think it was Brad. I'm sure it was Brad. Anyway, whoever the ref was, um, did not have control of the match whatsoever for this match, for the most part, and there was just constant interference on both sides. There was people coming in at weird times, and there was no adherence to the rules. Anyway, Trent hits a picture-perfect Emerald Flosion. It was perfect. It looks so good. Uh, before tagging in Alexia. Uh, Alexia spends a surprising lack of time inside the ring before tagging Trent back in. But together they hit a Bitter Flosion, which is the mixture of the Bitter End and the Emerald Flosion, which somehow only gets a two count. A reverse TKO from on Alexia from Judy gets, also gets two count. A Melbourne Cup is broken up by Trent and the match goes on. We get tandem pedigrees and simultaneous pins from ATO to get two counts. We get a stack of dimes. Uh, tandem power drivers get two as Kaz Jordan once again interjects himself. To which Brad does not throw... I didn't write Brad. To which Brad does not throw him out. Barry Wrestler need, need to work on their management. But, again, the referee in, you know... Have Brad do a refereeing course or something. Anyway, Brad doesn't throw him out. Uh, Trent takes Kaz out of the equation as a running power slam from Clyde Kane on Alexia gets two. However, a burning hammer and stack of dimensions power driver dimensions. Okay, stack of dimensions power driver on Clyde Kane is enough to give Barnett Mountain the win. This was amazing. Uh, I rate this four stars. This is a, a fantastic tag match. Uh, of course you've got the the makeshift team of Alexia and Trent who've proven that they can go because they had that amazing match last year uh, teaming up here and they pulled out the win which is not surprising given you know the potential makeshift team as well of ATO which might not be as fluid but it is what it is 
buy a mountain win, and maybe they can maybe maybe they're, maybe they're looking forward to to the, to the Barry Weston four hundred North Tattoo titles. Who knows? Maybe they maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're looking to do other things. Maybe, maybe Trent will turn on Alexia. Maybe Alexia will turn on Trent. We don't. <laughs> maybe maybe Fuzz will get jealous because he's not teaming with Alexia. I don't know. Anyway, Fallout tournament semi final time. Uh, it's time for Boris Krobos against Pretty Ricky Wildey. Both men are looking quite worse for wear here. Once again, Grizzmax here to manage Pretty Ricky. The bell rings, and the match is about to get started. Grizzly Max shoots the referee with a cap gun. Boris wins via DQ. And Ricky will be in the finals. Uh, I did not rate this match whatsoever. Uh, I thought it was quite cheap of the Royal Family to do this. But ultimately it makes sense I guess. But I guess, uh, I don't know, it's a weird thing. Because on one hand it's like, yeah they don't like Ricky but then... If he gets fired, they can't torment him anymore. So I don't understand the the real thinking behind it. Uh, but that is the royal family in a nutshell. You know, you know a few eggs short of an omelette. Um, anyway, that happens. And then I've got to you know, wonder why the cap gun before in the photo wasn't a DQ, but this was a DQ. So, go on. Consistency, continuity, whatever the word is. Anyway... Moving on to the next semi-final, uh, which was between Clay Wilson and Grizzly Mac. Or sorry, I should say Grizzly Mac, which is Anthony Musso. Uh, the match starts the same as any other Clay Wilson match with the Clay with Clay battling the crowd as they chant that he sucks. So again, you suck. I don't suck. Yes, you do. You suck. Uh, Clay reveals that he's got a working agreement with the Royal Family, where Grizzly would, or in this case now Anthony Musso, uh, will indeed lay down. Uh, this, you know, Musso will lay on the ground. Musso is not pleased whatsoever with this, despite not wanting to be matched whatsoever to begin with. Uh, so Musso has, has hesitated a lot more, and during this time, Clay probably should keep his mouth shut, but it's Clay Wilson, so he doesn't. And he berates Musso a bit too much. A bit too much, you know, when you just like, everyone's got a boiling point or like a ticking time bomb or. A ticking countdown, or you know, whatever. Like, he just, it's just a bit much. He pushed Musso over the edge. Uh, so Musso does go to lay down. Uh, but as, as the bell rings, Clay goes to pin him. Roll up for Musso. One, two, three. Musso's just beaten Clay Wilson in what might be the fastest match ever in pro wrestling. It was about four seconds, maybe five. Uh, I don't know what the record books say entirely about fast match in wrestling because Eric Rowan and The Rock does not count. Um, Clay Olsen, Anthony Musso, four seconds, five seconds, it could be up there for the fastest match ever. Um, again, I didn't rate this match because, again, it was just the same as the first semi final. It was a lot of just. One like, actual wrestling. It wasn't like actual fighting. Uh, for you know, for better or for worse, that's what it is. Uh, of course, the royal family were heavily involved in both of these things. Uh, so say what you will about the royal family being involved in non wrestling matches, uh, or being the reason why there wasn't enough wrestling or a lack of wrestling or whatever. You make your connections there. You connect those dots and you tell me what you think because I'm not saying it out loud. <laughs> uh, and then we move on, of course, to the main event, which was for the Barry Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. Should be noted that these are the only titles... This was the only title on the line during this show, which is quite weird thinking about it, but it was. Anyway, main event was John Atlas and the champion Jesse V. Uh, Diamond Jim comes in to do the introduction for John Atlas. Not too sure why. I might have missed something. I don't know. Diamond Jim, though, is joining Top Tier Talent. You heard it here first. He's joining Top Tier Talent. He has the prestige for it. It makes a lot of sense. He has pushed John Atlas way too much to not be a part of Top Tier Talent. So, Diamond Jim, congratulations. Uh, the match begins with both men signing each other up with a strike exchange. Uh, then they do it on the outside of the ring. Uh, Atlas uses his advantage in strategy and experience to take control of the early stages of the match. 
Uh, there's plenty of back and forth, but Jesse's able to use his speed and power to take back control, and he boasts new moves he doesn't usually do, such as a tornado DDT. Yes. Jesse V. The, you know, built like a, a brick house. Hitting a tornado DDT. Uh, it becomes much more of a match. I was like, anything you can do, I can do better, as they exchange more and more. Uh, John Atlas bursts, busts out a frog splash for a two count. We get a power bomb on the top rope, from, from the top rope, sorry, from Atlas. Also, it's also only gets a two count. There's even a moment where Atlas is on the turnbuckle. He's standing on the top turnbuckle, and Jesse V jumps up there and hits a hurricane runner. On John Atlas. John Atlas is like six foot something. Jesse V jumps from the from the from the ring up to Atlas's head to hit the Hurricane Runner, which is insane. Uh, I haven't got a clip of it. However, if you watch it, go watch it on either IWTV. Go put in the code Barry four hundred. I don't know what that does, but it does something good for them. So do that. Uh, IWTV Barry Wrestling Fortnite Tournament April thirteenth. Check out, check out the main event. If you check out anything from the show, check out the main event. Check out the mixed tag match. Uh, amazing stuff. Uh, of course, though, a momentary distraction for Atlas leads to Jesse V hitting an insecurity kick and Hurricane Runner uh, into a clutch and go powerbomb for the free. So, still, your Bay Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, Jesse V. He avenges his loss against John Atlas a few, a few months ago, or maybe a year ago now. Uh, Jesse is an absolute freak of nature. Atlas is good, but Jesse V is an actual freak of nature. Those are my notes, verbatim, word for word. Uh, again, I thoroughly enjoyed the match. Good main event. Uh, I rated it three and a half stars. Uh, was a match of the night for me, but it was up there. It was really good. Uh, I'm not surprised at the result, to be fully honest. Uh, of course, I think Atlas got more on his mind because of top tier talent, Clay Wilson, potential, you know, him getting fired and stuff like that. There's more just there, I reckon. But yeah, just if he wins and he's still a champion. And that brings an end to this show review. Uh, I've been Dan DP DeBreezy. Go check out Barry Wrestling. All the stuff will be in the description of the video below. Uh, and of course, for our channel, please check out our different outlets. So we have our Inst Inst Instagram, there we go. It's just over there, our Facebook, uh, our Twitter, and our Twitch, which we're actually live on right now. Uh, of course, if you're so inclined, please do give me a follow at Depreezy. Depreezy, there we go. Depreezy on Twitter. Uh, but yeah, that brings an end to this review. Uh, I've been Dan, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.